Hey guys, this is Mark from Oceaholic. Today I'm here with another unboxing review for you and uh, we're going to take on the MSI Z170A Gaming M7 motherboard. This is actually a high-end Z170 based motherboard and it supports the latest 6th uh, generation Intel Skylake processors. As you can see up here uh, chipset supported Z170 and 6th generation core processes. Um, the box art has been completely reworked with the Z170 series from MSI and to me this box looks pretty nice. Uh, there is kind of like a partial picture of the motherboard on top and it gives you like a glance at the, at the product already. Um, if you go around the box on the sides there is nothing which is really interesting to see. There is just some, um, the, the product name is um, mentioned a few more times and here on the head there is some information which we're going to talk about on the back of the board, of the box anyways. So yeah, if we have a quick overview, we see the, the name again, then the most important features like it's Windows 10 compatible, there is a specific gaming app, XSplit Gamecaster is in the bundle. Um, Amazon's military class 5 components are on board. Um, the board is certified by Steel Series. There is a BIOS Flashback Plus option and the board is gaming certified. Um, a Click 5 BIOS is uh, implemented and gaming hotkeys are supported. So that's a lot of marketing stuff already. And uh, if we if you continue, there is some, there is even more marketing stuff going on. Audio Boost 3 is supported, which is basically MSI's way of improving an ALC 1150 uh, audio codec from Realtek. Um, we see that Twin Turbo M.2 uh, ports are supported. It's actually 32 gigabit per second M.2 slots, which can be equipped with an adapter to support NVMe. Um, yeah, 32 gigabits, it translates to 4 gigabyte per second, so that is definitely very, very fast. Um, then there is the so-called steel armor. Amazon um, has thought of a, of a way to reinforce the PCI Express slots where you put in your graphics card. Um, maybe you have seen videos or pictures in the internet where the PCI Express slots have actually broken which is something that can happen when a system is being transported in a very, very rough manner. So yeah, these metal reinforcements should prevent that kind of damage. Apart from that, there is Amazon's Gaming LAN, which is basically a killer E2400 gigabit LAN interface with the according software. Um, there is also USB 3.0 one supported on this motherboard with a variation of connectors. There is actually one type C connector as you can see it down here and more type A con connectors as you can see it up here. Um, yeah, this board also supports DDR4 boost and so-called game boost. DDR4 boost actually means that MSI has been working on the pathways from the CPU to the memory, kind of like improving the signal strength. So yeah, this should basically help like get less noise in the in the traces from the CPU to the to the memory slots. And in the end ultimately you should be able to to reach higher overclocking frequencies on your memory. Okay, that's enough said about the box itself. Let's uh, have a look inside. As we can see, the, bo the board is nicely wrapped in an anti-static bag, but let's put it aside for a few minutes and have a look at, uh, at the delivery. Let's quickly take it out. Uh, first of all, there is, as always, the manual, which is like a complete little booklet. You find all the details to set up your board uh, nicely and correctly. So that's that. Then we go on with a DVD which is inside the box. 
Honestly, we would prefer it if vendors would put in USB sticks since uh, not everybody has a DVD drive in these systems anymore, especially when you have some super high-end rig. Uh, it's quite likely that you will not install a DVD drive since it might ruin your, uh, the, the looks of your case. Um, yeah, then there is a little badge which you can hang around your doorknob. It says, I'm not here, sorry, I'm busy gaming, which is a cool thing. Um, a quick installation guide which gives you like a um, brief overview on how to set up the, the rig, install memory, install cooler, put in the CPU, apply thermal compound and so on and so forth. Uh, some stickers to, uh, yeah, to put like uh, yeah, stickers to your SATA cables that you always name, uh, that you always know which one is going to which drive. And there is a little thanks to, to the customer that you actually bought this thing and you can register. Yeah, nice thing as well. And then go to the additional hardware which they supply. Uh, let's remove the box from the image here. Um, as you can see, there are SATA cables. Uh, in total, there are four of them. Um, two of them are straight straight and two of them are straight to a 90 degree angle. So it allows you to connect four SATA drives, which should basically be enough for any kind of like gaming system. Then there is a flexible SLI bridge. There is no crossfire bridge in the in the delivery. Um, here we go with the IO shield. It's nicely looking with the same color theme, black and red, with some isolation. And then there is MSI's uh, basically quick connector. You can plug in the power switch cables and uh, HDD LED, power LED, reset switch and so on and so forth uh, in an easier manner. And then we go with a sticker with the nice MSI Dragon. So that's been it with the bundle. Let's have a look at the motherboard itself. And in this case, let's just have a quick glance at it without any talks. Okay, you can see MSI has completely reworked the design of the motherboards once more. Um, to me, it looks really nice, quite homogeneous, although I think there is a little bit too much red. So these panels, I think these two, they're a bit too large and this is also a bit too large. So I would have preferred it if that is like, if these are a little bit smaller, this one and this one, which would, would make the thing look like more evenly distributed. Uh, what also jumps into the eye rather quickly are the, the shields here, these metal reinforcements. Um, honestly, I don't really want to try how much they, they can take because that would mean like breaking the board. But I do think that they s give some additional strength to the slots, but I would question on how much that actually is. So yeah, if we have a quick look around the board, we start at the bottom edge. Uh, we see the debug LED, then there is one fan header that uh, oh, you can connect uh, an external speaker here. That is a USB 2.0 connector, that's another one, that's another one. Then we have the flashback button here. We have a slow mode for the BIOS, which only overclockers will use. Then we have a power button, a reset button, and... Um, a tool to adjust uh, to do like um, quick overclocking. Uh, we have the Audio Boost 3 implementation here, and you can see that uh, the, the audio integration on the motherboard has been sealed off from the rest of the motherboard by this trace up here. Um, there are additional caps, there are two headphone preamps, and yeah. There are headphones supported with up, up to 60, 600 ohms of impedance. So this should be quite a high-end audio implementation. So if we go on, we see the two M.2 slots, which are PCI 3 Gen, uh, PCI Gen 3 X4. And yeah, they support up to 32 gigabit of bandwidth. Um, that allows for really fast M.2 drives. 
to be installed. Apart from that, you can also equip it with, um, with uh, NVMe adapters. Yeah, apart from that, yeah, there are four PCIe X1 Gen 3 slots for additional adapter cards. We like the fact that there is one PCI X1 slot on top of the first slot that supports VGAs because that means that there will be enough space for a large heatsink without like getting in the way of the graphics card. Yeah, and apart from that, as I already mentioned, only these two slots where you actually where you're most likely to plug in graphics cards do feature the the guard. Uh, yeah, so if we go on, we see the SATA slots. There is a total of six SATA slots, and four of these six SATA slots can be combined to two SATA Express ports. Um, unfortunately, peripherals with SATA Express interface. Um, are really, really rare. There is almost nothing available on the market. And SATA Express, although it's been around for more than a year, it's not really been able to make a, a, to get its breakthrough. Um, there is an onboard USB 3.0 header, which you can, um, where you can plug in your, your front USB 3 ports. And then there is another one. So in total, you get access to four additional USB 3.0 ports via these three headers. Uh, there is your standard ADX24 pin power plug. These are the, the DDR4 DIMM slots, which, as I already mentioned, support D up to DDR3 3600. Um, and you can see these red traces, which look really nice, and they kind of like show or they should visualize that MSI has been reworking these traces, which actually means that they have... Um, provided additional insulation to uh, achieve a clearer signal from the CPU to the memory. And this, in the end, should allow for higher overclocking. Um, apart from that, around the CPU era, we apparently have the VRM design, which is based on, a, let's count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 phases. Um, this is definitely plenty. MSI is using uh, titanium chokes in combination with uh, other chips from International Rectifier. So overall, this is a very high quality power design, as you might imagine or as you might expect it from a, from a high-end board from MSI. Um, yeah, if we go on, we find more fan headers around the PWM and the CPU area. There is one, two, three, four. So in total, there are actually five fan headers on this motherboard, which uh, all feature four pins. So with the software MSI delivers in the bundle, you can easily adjust um, uh, rotation speeds of your fans when they're connected with a PWM four pin header. Apart from that, up here we see the EPS 8-pin adapter to provide additional power to the CPU. And yeah, if we go on, we see the I.O. panel. On here we have two or actually three standard USB 2 ports. And uh, this particular port is a um, USB is the USB flashback port, which is which is a new feature that arrived with MSI boards. Uh, it's, it, it allows you to flash a motherboard without your PC being in use. Up here we have a legacy PS2 port. Uh, you can see a display port here and two HDMI ports. Uh, that here is your killer E2400 Ethernet 1 gigabit port. Then we have three USB 3.1 type A ports, here is a USB 3.1 type C port, and here you have the audio panel with the analog ports as well as an optical out. Um, if we have a look at the board from the back, uh, the most interesting thing is always uh, to see by how many lanes the PCI Express slots have been wired. So here you see it's a fully fledged PCI Express X16. That is actually the first slots to plug in graphics cards. 
and the second slot for graphics card has been wired with eight lanes and the third one has also been wired using eight lanes um, and these here are the x4 ones um, apart from that it's it's also quite interesting to see that uh, msi is really using like big screws to to tighten the and the coolers to the motherboard usually vendors use like smaller screws so we're surprised to see like uh, screws this big um, yeah overall i think this is a pretty good motherboard we've already done the preview article on oceolic.ch and we've apparently taken all the pictures that go alongside with it we've also added this board to our, ch our charts and I have to say with SAD 170, all the boards I've tested so far, they come with a rather mature BIOS. So there is not really like any performance um, hits you have to take and wait for later BIOS versions. Uh, these boards, they are pretty mature already. So the vendors have done a lot of work, a lot of testing before the launch. And yeah. In terms of pricing, um, as of today, I think this board is available for around 240 euros, which makes it, as I said, a high-end motherboard for a premium price. It's actually not cheap, but for that, you get a really nice looking board, as I said, with a mature BIOS, good performance, and yeah, it's definitely a board I like. So thank you very much for for watching this video i hope you learned something if you have any questions please feel free to add a comment uh, leave a comment and yeah don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and thanks again for watching bye bye guys